proposed to say, hey, you know, we'll put a note on you and you can pay us the rest over 5, 10, 15 years so they don't take a hit on their credit. Um, I've had lenders offer it to my clients. My clients say, I don't want anything to do with it. And lenders say, okay, we're, you know, we'll do it. But I've had that offered and I've, I've talked to lenders who have said they have offered that to other clients and uh, in exchange for them to, you know, be able to not give them a 1099. It has not happened to any of our clients yet, but I have, I have heard that before. Anything else? Real quick, last one, though. With the seller's owner-occupied, you have a, a notice of default filed on the property, and the investor buyer, are they able to make the offer, or, or do you reject those offers, I guess, from an investor? I've heard it's for violation of the Home Equity Protection Act or something. Okay, the question that he has is, if the property is a notice of default, they're going into foreclosure, um, and you get an offer from another agent, we just had that, Sonny. We just had that transaction. Where Sonny stayed clear of the transaction, there are also, there actually are some CAR forms that basically the buyer's representing themselves. If it's one of those type of properties, the buyers represent themselves. You need to be very careful with those, Janet. Uh, there's a law, there was a We couldn't hear it. We okay, couldn't. but that wasn't before. That was that just right came. Okay, okay, good. That's good to know. Okay, what she's saying is that, uh, in a nutshell, right now it's 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 in litigation, more or less, so to speak, and they're working on the possibility of being able to you represent a person who's buying a property as that's a notice of for foreclosure. Prior to this happening. You could not represent an investor that was buying a property that had a notice of default or a foreclosure type of a property. We came into that before that, and the way we handle it, basically, there are some forms that are from CAR, and the buyer basically represented himself. I mean, I'm sure Sonny off a little bit with inspections, ordering, all those type of things, but Sonny got paid, the buyer's happy, everything was done legally in the right way. Any more questions? Okay. I want to ask you one last thing. When you have a short sale listing, treat it like a real listing. Take pictures of it, put your lockbox on there, put flyers on there. You know, I look at properties that are short sales and people think they're like the, you know, like I said, they're like a disease. And they just put it on a list and hopefully, you know, they throw enough spaghetti in the wall, something's gonna stick. No, that's not gonna happen, guys. Treat your listings, all listings, because you have to remember you're representing your sellers. Even though it's a short sale or not, because you know why I say that? I look at so many properties on MLS, and we have a lot to do with what happens with the market because of the way we treat our, our business. Okay, I look at so many listings out there, they're in the market for 280 days, there's no picture, there's no lockbox, there's no way to get a hold. How the heck do you expect for those listings to sell? Okay, because it's a short sale, and they have one line, short sale, boom. Treat your listings like regular listings, whether it's a short sale or not, because you have an ultimate responsibility to your sellers, and you know what, you're doing your industry a lot of harm, by not doing that because your property's gonna stay on the market a lot longer, and it's just really gonna bring down values for everybody else. That's just how I feel about it. So I wanna thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Thank you, where's Pauline? Pauline, thank you, Pauline.